Hi, welcome back. In this section, we're going to look at different ways you can build rapport with your customers. We'll talk about the power of first impressions, purposeful small talk, your voice, eye contact, facial expressions, and body language. We'll cover various effective techniques that'll help you connect and build trust with your customers. The truth is, when customers like you, they're much easier to work with. As you've probably noticed in your daily communication, building rapport happens easily with some people, but it can be more challenging with others. Here's an interesting fact. Body language accounts for over 60% of our communication. No matter what type of activity you're doing, your body is saying a lot about you. People can pick up on cues even from minor things like subtle facial expressions, the way you move, and even the way your feet are pointing. The way you act influences how your customers feel about interacting with you. And it'll affect how well you do your job and the kind of feedback that you receive. Knowing this, you can control what you do and use it to your advantage when you're communicating with customers. Let's look at some techniques that you can use that appeal to a wide range of people. How long do you think it takes to form a first impression? Well, there's a lot of research and different opinions on this. Some believe it only takes a few seconds, some studies say 7 seconds, while other research states 30. Whatever study you choose to follow, the most important point is to remember is that the first impressions happen quickly. They make a difference and their effect is long lasting. So what happens when you see someone for the first time? Let's say you notice someone walking across the street. You immediately start taking in and processing information about them based on your first observations. You might notice their appearance, what they're wearing and their body language. And subconsciously, your mind starts to make decisions about that person. Within just seconds, you'll have an opinion of what that person is like, just based on your initial observations. Any additional information you learn about them later will be filtered through your first impression that you've already formed in your mind. So that's why first impressions play a crucial role in building rapport. Because it's important to make a positive first impression with your customers, why not make the most out of the situation? These few seconds are super important. So let's look at two main things that play a role in your first impressions. First of all, your appearance matters. If your customers can see you, whether that's in person or in video, make sure that your appearance sends the message that you want. Ask yourself, who is your audience and what image do you want to project? And based on that, choose clothes, colors, and a personal style that create that image. For example, wearing a dark blue suit helps a well-groomed business person convey confidence and authority during an important meeting. Your choice of clothing will vary greatly based on many factors, including your industry, company dress code, culture, and so on. So the takeaway here is to think about what message you want to send out and make decisions based on what would be appropriate for that. Whatever you choose, your goal should be to send send out a message that you're confident, professional, and that you can be trusted by your customers. Second, your body language and facial expressions need to match the image that you created. If you are slouching, avoiding eye contact, and looking down on the ground, your body language sends a message to your customer that you're unsure of what you're doing, and they will question whether they can really trust you. If you want to look confident, you'll have to adopt a confident-looking posture. When you smile, show eye contact, and keep your head up, your body language will send a signal that you're someone who knows what they're doing and that your customers can trust what you say. As an exercise, next time you see someone crossing the street, Pay attention to their appearance and their body language and how quickly you form your first impression of them just based on those few factors. Using this knowledge, you can make the most of those first few seconds to create a positive first impression for your customers. Building rapport is essential to providing good service. The first step is by simply starting a conversation. Some people are natural conversationalists, but don't worry if that doesn't come naturally to you. In this lecture, I'm going to share five tips that will help you master the art of purposeful small talk. In fact, purposeful small talk comes with many benefits. It makes the customers feel comfortable by getting them a chance to talk about themselves. It also reduces your customer's perception of wait time by filling dead air while they're waiting for you to look up some information or while they're on hold. For example, if you're on the phone processing a transaction, that requires some time. Purposeful small talk will make this time pass faster and will keep your customer happy while they wait. By asking the right questions, small talk can actually provide you with more background information about the situation. You will be able to resolve the issue faster and still engage with the customer. As a result, you're helping to fix the problem while helping the customer feel good about your conversation. It's a win-win for everyone. So the question is, how exactly do you do that? First of all, 
To initiate purposeful small talk, ask questions related to the issue at hand. Although there's nothing technically wrong with asking about the weather, it won't give you any valuable information to resolve the issue. Don't confuse small talk with random chit chat, which actually doesn't bring much value. The goal of small talk is not to ask random questions. Focus on questions that will help to reach the customer's goals. The best questions will help you to learn more about your customer's needs and their preferences. Think about why this customer reached out to you in the first place. And keep this conversation focused on finding a solution and ask open-ended questions that will help you better understand what's going on so you can help them faster. Most importantly, whenever you ask a question, make sure that you're paying attention to their answer. If you're asking someone how they're doing and they share that they're not having a great day, be prepared to empathize to show them that you're actually listening and care about what they have to say. Tip number two, when you're interacting with customers, Talk the way you talk in real life, so you don't come off sounding too inauthentic or too robotic. For example, when you bump into someone on the street, you probably wouldn't say, please accept my apologies for this inconvenience, right? That sounds slightly awkward. You would probably say, I'm sorry about that, which sounds much more natural and approachable. Tip number three, remember to use language and vocabulary so your customers can easily understand you. Avoid using really technical words or fancy industry terminology that might confuse or intimidate them. Remember that the average customer is not going to be an expert on your product. Using terms that customers don't understand could actually leave them feeling even more frustrated. Instead, keep things simple to keep communication clear. It's important to remember that even though you know the product and your industry, the customer might be completely new to it. In this case, Using simple vocabulary and providing step-by-step instructions can make a big difference. If you need to provide instructions when communicating online, think of what visuals can help to explain the message. This might be helpful if you add screenshots, photos, how-to videos, just to show the customers how to use the product and to resolve their issues. Tip number four, build relationships with your customers. Purposeful small talk and clear communication helps you build a relationship with your customers. In fact, Customer support is a lot like dating. Usually you don't go on one date and then get married the next day, although there are stories like that that do exist. But in most cases, you have to take the time to build a relationship and to keep it going. So when you end the conversation with, let us know if you have any other questions, you're closing the conversation. Instead, ask more open-ended questions to build the relationship with the customer. For example, you can ask if the solution helped them resolve the issue and what else you can do to assist them. Although the difference is very subtle, this shows the customer that you're willing to offer your support. When you say that, you're confirming that you've helped to resolve their issue and the customer doesn't leave the conversation without any other questions. And tip number five, be genuine. Purposeful small talk is great, but with some customers, it feels more natural than with others. If it doesn't go as smoothly as you hoped, don't worry. The most important thing is that you do your best and make the customer feel happy. At the end of the day, your customers won't remember what went wrong but they will remember how you treated them. Simply by being genuine, you're showing them that you care and you're doing your best to help. Just like any skill, purposeful small talk requires some time and practice. Try applying these tips and see how much easier it'll be to connect with your customers and to resolve their issues. One of the most effective techniques is communicating your positive message with your tone of voice. To sound friendly and positive, use a slightly higher pitch and remember to smile when you're talking. Although it sounds very simple, these things will help you sound more positive and dynamic. This applies to both in-person and phone communication. The good news is that you don't need to try really hard to sound overly friendly or polite. In fact, trying too hard can come off sounding sarcastic or even condescending to some people. The key is to speak using your natural voice as much as possible. And try to find a balance between sounding both professional and friendly at the same time. Your tone of voice will show customers that you're approachable and confident in what you're doing. When helping customers in person or over the phone, you want to make the experience feel as personalized as possible. So don't be afraid to show your personality. That's perfectly fine as long as you maintain a sense of professionalism. After all, it is a regular conversation and not a sales presentation. This will make you appear more relatable to your customers, and they will also be more willing to listen to your advice and accept the solutions that you're proposing. Also, depending on the inquiry, you'll need to adapt your tone of voice to match the situation. Pay attention to the customer's emotions and their tone when they're communicating with you. For example, 
If they're upset and had a negative experience with your company, choose words and tone of voice to show your sympathy. In this case, speaking in a low and understanding voice will reassure customers that you understand their situation and that you're going to do everything you can to resolve the issue. When it comes to written communication, your tone is just as important. A study published in the Journal of Neuroscience suggests that when we read, we trigger an inner voice in our brains. This voice reads the words on the page as if we were actually hearing someone say them. For example, imagine that you're reading a fiction book and the characters are speaking to each other. When you read their dialogue in your head, thanks to your imagination, you can actually almost hear their voices in your mind. The same thing happens when a customer receives an email from you. In their mind, they're assigning a voice and tone to your message. This means that you need to be careful about how you phrase yourself So you come off sounding professional and friendly in your writing. No matter what it is that you're saying, your voice reveals how you feel. One of the biggest challenges of finding the best tone is that there is no right answer for what works every single time. It depends on you, your company, your customers, and the scenario. With practice, you'll develop the ability to read your customer's tone and mood and respond in a way that's appropriate in that situation. Your body language is just as important even when customers can't see you like when you're speaking on the phone, writing an email, or even chatting online. It influences how warm and friendly your tone of voice sounds, even in a written message. If you're sitting, watch your posture to make sure that you feel comfortable and that you're sitting upright. It helps you to stay focused if your body is pointing in the direction of the phone or the computer screen. To make this feel more natural, imagine that you're actually having a conversation with a customer and they're right in front of you. It's hard to sound warm and friendly if your body language doesn't match what you're saying. Every single interaction you have with a customer is an opportunity to learn and improve. Remember, your voice is a powerful tool in communication. If the customer is like the way you communicate, they will perceive you as knowledgeable and someone they can trust. A smile and eye contact play an important role in building rapport with your customers. People will be drawn to you if they see you as being positive and approachable. A smile will make you instantly appear more welcoming. Just make sure that it is genuine. People will notice when your smile looks forced. Instead, let it come naturally. If the customer says something funny, it'll probably make you smile or laugh in response. When you smile in your interactions, you will increase the number of people who feel happy about your service. Smiling also has a direct effect on your voice, body language, and your eye contact. As much as you listen with your ears, you should also listen with your eyes. As funny as that sounds, your eyes are actually key when it comes to effective listening. When you naturally look someone in the eyes, you are showing that you are confident, attentive, and sincere. When people avoid eye contact, others might perceive them as shy, distracted, or even dishonest. Maintaining eye contact during interaction shows customers they are important and that you value whatever they have to say. It doesn't mean that you should stare at them without blinking. That would be quite hard to do and would probably make them feel uncomfortable. So make it easy and just keep it natural. Here's something important to remember about eye contact. While eye contact is a universal method of communication, its meaning can be interpreted in different ways all over the world. It can vary across different cultures, and that's something you need to be aware of when you're working with a multicultural audience. In most of North America and Western Europe, eye contact is normally viewed as appropriate and polite. On the other hand, in some regions and cultures, Prolonged eye contact can be seen as disrespectful, aggressive, or even a challenge of authority. Brief eye contact is more common, but it is important not to stare or lock eyes for too long. So if you're working with people from different backgrounds, be aware of these cultural differences. Watch their body language to make sure that they feel comfortable communicating with you. And adjust your eye contact if it's necessary. When it comes to your posture, an open body stance means that your hands and legs are uncrossed, and by the side of your body. In other words, they're not folded across your chest or hiding inside your pockets. They should be free of any barrier. This creates a welcoming environment for your customers and shows them that you're honest and willing to help. Your posture helps to create a positive impression and improve the customer's attitude towards you. On that note, here is some fun trivia. Did you know that a person's feet reveal a lot about their emotions? Usually, we don't pay attention to someone's feet when we're talking to them just because we're focused on the upper body, but the feet reveal a lot of information about how that person is feeling. For example, when customers are bored, anxious, or stressed, their feet can actually reveal these emotions. For instance, 
If you're talking with someone and you notice that their feet are pointing towards the exit, this might indicate that they're ready to end the conversation and leave. On the other hand, when their feet are pointed towards you, it means that the customer is engaged and interested in what you have to say. Of course, this doesn't mean staring down at the feet is a good idea, but by simply having this knowledge, you will be able to better assess your customer's emotional state. Also, let's talk about personal space and communication. When you're interacting with people in person, keep a respectable distance between yourself and give them enough personal space. I'm referring to the physical space around us that makes us feel comfortable and safe in our surroundings. When you get too close to someone, that could make them feel uncomfortable and anxious. If that happens, people would react by backing away or ending the interaction. In North America, a distance of about a meter is considered suitable. It's not too close or too distant either. So pay close attention to the customer's body language and use your own judgment if you need to give them a bit more space. This will show your customer that you respect them and want to make sure that they feel at ease interacting with you. Have you ever noticed that when people are bored or uncomfortable, they start to fidget? Pay attention to your body language to make sure that you're not fidgeting when you're interacting with your customers. Fidgeting shows them that you're restless, that there are too many other activities going on in your head. It can also be distracting or look like you're waiting to end your conversation. When you are still, customers see that you're focused on communicating with them. To do this, avoid any unnecessary movements that may be distracting you and the customer. For example, when you are speaking to someone, try not to sway from side to side. Avoid glancing at your watch, playing with your hands, or tapping a pen on the table. These kinds of distractions can make the customer feel frustrated, as they'll see you're not fully focused on them. They might also get the impression that you look nervous or unprepared. So to look professional, cut off any distracting habits in your communication. To do this, start paying attention to your body language. What are you doing when you're communicating with someone? Simply by being aware of your actions, you'll be able to pinpoint any unnecessary movements that need to be removed. You can ask your family or peers to watch you and give you feedback, or you can even record yourself talking on video. So you might be surprised by what you actually find. If you catch yourself, resist the temptation to fidget and you'll notice how much better you will be at communicating. If you find that you fidget a lot with your hands, there are a couple of things you can do. Either you can gently clasp them together when listening to someone or use them to enhance your conversations instead. In the next lecture, we'll be covering how hand gestures actually improve your communication. So by making subtle gestures when you, with your hands instead of fidgeting, you'll come across much more confident and dynamic. Also, things like caffeine and sugar can make people feel jittery and restless. If you find that makes you fidget because you can't sit still, try cutting down on those and see if that helps. So in summary, if you catch yourself fidgeting, stop and return your focus to what's happening in that moment. Listen with your eyes, take in all the information the customer is sharing with you, both from their words and their body language. When you give customers your full attention, this leads to better conversations and more satisfied customers. It's all mind over matter. Remember these tips so you can use your body language to improve your communication with your customers. Unlike fidgeting, making conscious use of hand gestures will help you express yourself easier. Here's an interesting study done by the University of Gothenburg on the topic of hand gestures. They tested three groups of subjects. Each one was asked to speak under different conditions. The first group had both of their hands immobilized. In the second group, people had one hand immobilized. And the third group was able to use hand gestures freely. So what they found was that when hand gestures were restricted, people's language fluency decreased. This actually made it more difficult for the speakers to find the right words in conversation, which also affected their fluency. Using gestures is natural to us, and we do it all the time in our daily interactions. What you can do in customer service is make the use of hand gestures more meaningful. Use your hands to describe or emphasize things. For instance, if you're talking about something circular or round, you can use your hands to describe the shape. Or when you're discussing an increase or a decrease in pricing, you can slowly raise your arm or lower it down to get your point across. Using gestures will help you communicate more effectively. And it'll also show customers that you're confident and passionate about what you're saying. Mirroring the customer's body language, choice of words, and tone is a great way to establish rapport. That's actually something we already do every day without realizing as we interact with people. And you can get better at it by using the following strategies. 
For example, if a customer talks slowly and in a soft voice, and you naturally speak very fast, try slowing down and speaking quieter to match their tempo. Simply making that change and speaking at the same pace and volume as your customer can make a huge difference to help you connect with them. They'll actually feel more connected and will understand you better. On the other hand, if they speak fast and loud, increase your volume and speed up to match the way they talk. Matching pace of volume is easy and much less obvious than actually imitating someone's physical actions. Also, if you notice the customer tends to use certain words, use that vocabulary in your response. Marketers do it all the time. They use customer language in ads and copywriting to connect with their audience to sell products. The customer will just feel like you're speaking their language. And as a result, they will gravitate towards you if you speak in their terms. As a result, they'll feel like that you have lots in common and that you understand what they have to say. One final word of caution. When you mirror others, make sure that you're only mirroring positive body language. Avoid negative behavior, like blocking communication with your arms folded or looking away in conversation. All of these movements can be really distracting. So try it out and see how it goes next time you're interacting with someone. It works wonders for building connections.